in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. It's wonderful to be here at Lord Harris Court. My name is uh, the Reverend Simon Thorne. I'm the Grand Chaplain for the United Grand Lodge of England. I'm also a parish priest in the Oxford, uh, in the Berkshire Deanery of Newbury, so it's not far for me to come. And of course, you will remember my mother, Pinky, who is, was a resident here for seven years until earlier this year. So we'll be remembering her um, as well as we pray today. I'm recording this service in the hope that other um, members of the RMBI Care Co group are able to share in our worship and we'll be able to listen to this service over the uh, coming days. So thank you to the congregation at Lord Harris Court for joining me and uh, I do hope you'll be able to uh, see the words for the hymns. I must tell you that you're not allowed to sing but you are allowed to hum along to the tune and my wife and I have been recording ourselves singing the hymns so I won't be uh, singing live either. So we begin our worship with the harvest hymn Come Ye Thankful People Come. So we come to prepare ourselves to receive these holy mysteries as we say the prayer of preparation together. 
Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment, and the second is like, namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. There is none other commandments greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write all these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. And so we come to confess our sins before the Lord. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbours and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God. And so we say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against thee and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are heartily sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve thee in newness of love to the glory of thy name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We say the Gloria together. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art the Most High in the glory of God the Father. Amen. So we come to the special prayer for Harvest Thanksgiving, the Collect for Harvest Thanksgiving. Let us pray. O eternal God, who crowns the year with goodness and gives us the fruits of the earth in their season, grant that we may use them to thy glory for the relief of those in need and for our own well-being. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who 
who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. The epistle is written in the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 9, beginning at the sixth verse. The point is this, the one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. As it is written, he scatters abroad, he gives to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for your gen great generosity, which will produce thanksgiving to God through us. For the rendering of this ministry not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also overflows with many thanksgivings to God. Through the testing of this ministry, you glorify God by your obedience to the confession of the gospel of Christ and by the generosity of your sharing with them and with all others, while they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God that he has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel is written in the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 12, beginning at the 16th verse. Then Jesus told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly, and he thought to himself, What should I do, for I have no place to store my crops? Then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones, and there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, You fool. This very night your life is being demanded of you, and the things that you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich towards God. Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens, they neither sow nor reap, they have neither storehouse nor barn, and yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And how can any of you be worrying by worrying, add a single hour to the span of your life? If then you are not able to do so small a thing as that, why do you worry about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow, how they neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon, in all his glory, was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, you of little faith? And do not keep striving for what you are to eat or what you are to drink, and do not keep worrying. For it is the nations of the world that strive after all these things, and your Father knows that you need them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well, I'm sure you know we live in very unsettling times. In March, the Director General of the World Health Organization addressing a media briefing about COVID-19 and its pandemic said, crises like these tend to bring out the best and the worst in humanity. It may be a cliche, but it's at times like this when you find out who your true friends are. This applies as much to in a national crisis as it does in your own individual struggles. I'm sure we all know the disappointment of discovering someone on whom we thought we could rely 
actually lets us down. The sense of abandonment is acute. The wound is deep. Yet the problem is actually down to selfishness. When you have a sense of entitlement and you're always in control, you resent not having things your own way. Our parents have spent many years trying to teach us not to act like spoilt children, only for us to revert to type when the going gets tough. We are tempted to sulk, or worse, to take it out on others. And our relationship with God is just the same. As we have taken his creation and his generosity for granted, we have come to think that we are entitled to it all and forever. We have gone from being faithful stewards to unjust servants. The earth is an extraordinary miracle of delicately balanced and finely tuned cycles. We have yet to identify another planet which has allowed life to evolve and diversify into the beautiful and complex web of nature that we enjoy on our earth. Our weather, our landscape, our homes, our food, our very existence depends on the balance of its natural systems. Yet as we have seen with accelerated global warming, when we push the natural world faster than it can adapt, just as we, if we push ourselves too far, by emitting more greenhouse gases than can be absorbed by forests and oceans and by over-harvesting our land and seas faster than they can replenish themselves, we, we turn our world into a desert. And the reason for the over-harvesting, the over-cropping, the overproduction of goods, it is pure selfishness. The focus on ourselves at the expense of our neighbour rather than loving our neighbor as ourselves, will only lead to ruin. And every prophet in history has shouted about this, only for it to fall on deaf ears. Perhaps it's because we've become so divorced from the natural world, the seasonal challenges which farmers face in looking after their crops and animals, that Western society is in such deep denial. Because it's because Perhaps it's because we are so arrogant about human ingenuity and achievement that we assume there will be a technological fix. The boffins will find something, and soon. In the meantime, we don't have to worry, so long as we have enough coal and gas reserves and virgin rainforests to keep us going for a lifetime, or at least until the next presidential or general election. But Harvest Thanksgiving really should be on our minds continually, every day, when we pray, give us this day our daily bread. This part of the Lord's Prayer reminds us of our dependence on God, not only for our spiritual food, but for our physical sustenance. Of course, human resentment of this bountiful generosity is nothing new. Even when given manna in the wilderness, the Israelites still grumble. And in Deuteronomy, Chapter 8, we read, For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with flowing streams, with springs and underground waters, welling up in valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land where you may eat bread without scarcity, where you will lack nothing. But do not say to yourself, My power and the might of my own hand have gained me this wealth. Remember the Lord your God. But did mankind remember it? No. And St Paul echoes this Old Testament theme many times in his letters and builds on it by telling the church not to keep God's generosity themselves. In our epistle reading this morning, he wrote, and God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. And in today's gospel reading, Jesus, as he so often does, draws on the familiarity of farming parables to teach us the truth about God and ourselves. He says, our anxiety and worry induces selfishness. And in our selfishness, we always harm the most vulnerable in society. We might joke about the idiocy of stockpiling lavatory paper or baked, bean, baked beans as soon as lockdown is mentioned. But it's way more serious than that. When we hold on to or acquire more than we can consume or need, others are left struggling. And Jesus promises that at his heavenly banquet, the first shall be last and the last first. And when his kingdom is come on earth, he tells us in the Beatitudes, 
the humble will be exalted, the hungry filled, and the sick made whole. Jesus' mother, Mary, sings in that song we know so well as the Magnificat from Eden Song. He hath put down the mighty from their seat, hath exalted the humble and meek, he hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. Unless we actually believe and make real this kingdom vision, as we pray, thy kingdom come, we will remain like the nations of the world, whose greed for status, wealth, and material comfort makes them blind to those who have no food or shelter or safe place to call their home. So let us, let this harvest thanksgiving remind us that we are all workers in God's vineyard, called by the vine dresser to labor so that the vine may bear much fruit. Jesus said, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. And as we share this holy meal of Holy Communion, let us remember the generosity of God in inviting us to this heavenly banquet of which this Eucharist is a foretaste, that we may be the body of Christ, sharing his loving presence in the world and to pray for those who need our prayers. Amen. And so we come to the offertory hymn for the fruits of his creation. And while it is sung, um, I'll be preparing the table for our holy meal. to our prayers of intercession we pray for those whom we love those of our family that we don't see as often as we would like we pray for those who have nobody to pray for them those who are alone at home and aren't able to share in the community that we do here those who are in refugee camps and those who are in hospital Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church militant here in earth. Almighty and ever-living God, 
who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men. We humbly beseech thee most mercifully to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes, and governors, and especially thy servant Elizabeth, our queen, that under her we may be godly and quietly governed, and grant unto her whole council and to all that are put in authority under her, that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to give us grace so to follow their good example, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul says. This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John says. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the uh, Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls wash through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered, 
a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And it institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. In the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me likewise after supper he took the cup and when he had given thanks he gave it to them saying drink ye all of this for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. O Lord and Heavenly Father, we, the humble servants, entirely desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we in all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy and lively sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And although we be unworthy through our own manifold sins to, be, to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offences through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom in the unity of the Holy Ghost all honour and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, and the blood which was shed for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy hearts, by faith, with thanksgiving. Amen.
let us pray the prayer that our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost vouchsafe to feed us who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favour and goodness towards us, and that we are very members in corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of that everlasting kingdom by the merits of the most precious death and passion of thy dear Son. And we most humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. Now we have our final hymn.
The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Depart in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.